England. And there we go. And a lovely little group of female eland. And I haven't seen them this close to the river before. So maybe as the season is changing, they're going to move down from the highlands, uh, like around our camp, where we've been actually been seeing a lot of eland, and come down to the river. They are quite skittish, as you can see. Now, there's a very interesting reason why eland is so skittish. And uh, it's quite a lot to do with human beings. Now, of all animals, they have the furthest flight distance from a human being. And there's a very important reason for that. And they are the only animal a human being can probably run down. So they don't, they're not very fast and they don't have very good stamina. So they can keep up a slow speed or walk for, for a vast distance. Oh, lost the rest of them. But a human being can run down an eland. And so when they generally see human beings or get a slight fright, uh, they will run up to sort of five, six hundred meters away, where there is before turning around to look at you. Oh, we've got some Tommies and Parley here still. Where there is other animals, like the Tommy, who knows it's got some speed on its side, will generally run a much shorter distance before turning around and checking what's chasing it. Oh, we even have a Grant's gazelle as well. Yeah, a nice big male Grant. So, two gazelles named after two different Scottish explorers. Grant, who that gazelle is named after, was part of the Speak and Burton mission to the Mountains of the Moon, where they discovered the source of the Nile. Hang on a second, what's that? Just hang on, uh, all the animals. Maybe it wasn't us who gave the eland a fright. I just want to have a quick look up onto the ridge. There's impalas. Everyone's looking quite carefully towards the edge of that tree line. Can you see anything, Dave? I see two blackback jackal. Can you see the blackback jackal? Yep. Okay. Now, just have a look. There's a Thompson's gazelle. She was running towards the jackals. I wonder if she doesn't have a baby hidden in the grass there somewhere. And she seems to have stopped now. And jackal's just getting moving. Now, we get both black-backed and side-striped jackal here. Now, when you do see jackal, they tend to follow the hyenas and lions quite a lot here. So I'm just double-checking with the binos, making sure that there isn't a lion or, or, or hyena around. See that Thompson's gazelle going closer and closer to the jackals, just to the left, Dave. So there's a jackal, no, the, the jackal to the left. There we go. See, there's that Thompson's gazelle. Now, she took off towards where those jackals are, which makes me wonder if she hasn't got a baby hidden in the long grass, and she's worried that those jackals might find it. This is very, very fascinating. Oh, dear, Dave, are you ready for a challenge? Oh, is it going to fly out of shot? You see it? It'll be a new bird for lots of people. Montague's Harrier. Oh no, come back, Montague's. Turn towards us. You got him. No, he's disappeared. Sorry about that. Well, we do see them quite often. And now that Thompson's gazelle has trotted past the jackals. And so she's obviously decided that if she does have a baby hidden, it is safe. Oh, it's just, it's so wonderful. There's so much game around here. And remember, this is the quiet season. Now, someone was asking, why are there more Thompson's gazelles than Grant's gazelles? And, well, it just depends on where you are, but uh, the Tommies are more numerous uh, than, than the Grant's. But the interesting thing about the Grant's gazelles is they actually almost have a reverse migration. So when the wildebeest, uh, the 
migrating tommies and uh, the zebra arrive, uh, the grants go the opposite direction. They really don't like the busy, busy savannas. And they seem to be more common in slightly drier areas. So there we go. But there are a few of them around. They're more on the other side of the river. Oh, ostriches, Dave. Big flock of ostriches. And on the way. So there we go. It was James was James was asking about that question about Grants and Tommies. So they tend to prefer a slightly more arid area. They're more common in Tanzania that's a bit drier than the Mara. And as I said, they, they tend to have a reverse migration. They tend to try shy away from uh, the big migration. Um, and I, as I say that, I'd say in this area it's just because of the it being a lot wetter here. There's a nice group of ostriches. Oh, sorry. There's a, you can see a safari vehicle. Oh, even bedecked with zebra stripes. Nochal. Now, nochal is a very South African saying. It means, what does it mean? And all. Indeed, and all. Can you believe? Uh, zebra stripes on a, on a land cruiser. Not the strangest striped vehicle I've seen. Okay, well, you know, let's go get a little bit closer to those ostriches. Um, it's going to take us a little while to get there. We do have to watch our time at the moment. So we do have to be out of the park by, by 6.30. So I'm going to have a quick gander down towards the ostriches. We'll do a quick swing past Scar, see if he's stood up. If not, we'll head to see if we can find any of the Angama ladies uh, around the base of the hill.